Welcome to The Power Is Now Community TV. My name is Eric Frazier. It's a beautiful day in Southern California, a great day to talk about real estate and financial literacy and to work with and to speak to community leaders. Now, folks, community leaders have always played a significant role in helping the community. I think God calls up, raises up leaders in our community to help us address some of the challenges that we face uh, in just in daily life. And uh, with me today is Denise Hunt, and she is a community leader. She's starting a community organization, and she is starting it because of her own personal experience with wealth and saving money and buying a home. And we're going to learn about that in just a few minutes. Now, before the break, uh, Denise had mentioned that the wealth gap is really what's driving her to do this. I mean, there is a significant wealth gap, folks. The rate of homeownership for African Americans nationally is around 40, 47, 45 percent, 45 percent. The highest, I believe, has ever been is in the 50s, and that was during the whole subprime bubble, which is kind of interesting. You know, the only time that we could, you know, increase our rate of homeownership to the highest that it's ever been is when bad loans were available. Now that all that has gone away, you know, we're back to the low 40s. Our rate of homeownership has been as low as 41. Uh, For other minority groups, it's higher. Latinos are close to 50. The Asian community is in the high 60s. Uh, White Americans are 73, 74%. That's the rate of homeownership. And so homeownership is the primary driver of this wealth gap. And getting people in position to buy a home Uh, I think is the first thing they should do right out of school, right out of getting their job. And I know Denise would agree with me. Welcome back, Denise, to the show. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today to talk about Walking in Prosperity and this organization that you have founded uh, uh, to, to help others. And I'm inspired by what you've been able to accomplish so far and just get it organized and launching your first event. And so before we get into your background, let's share again to the audience the first event. Tell us about it again. And it's going to be on Zoom, y'all. Yes, it's going to be Saturday, November 4th at noon. And we're going to cover a wide range of topics relating to home ownership and real estate investments. So strategies, guidelines, down payment, and closing assistant programs. We would love to have you join us for our first event. Folks, I mean, seriously, write this down, click on the link below and join this event. I promise you will not regret it. And even if you may not be able to make it because of work of other family obligations, if you register, you'll be able to watch the replay. Now, Denise, this is coming from your own personal experience, and uh, I I want you to just start with the beginning, right? First of all, you're a fellow Bulldog. Go Bulldogs, right? (laughs) You got your college degree. And were you you buying or owning or living at home when you were going to school? When when did you make that transition from, you know, renting or living at home to, to owning? Yes, it's such an interesting story, so I thank you for the opportunity to share it. Um, I was actually living, renting, I should say, before making the decision to buy. I really wanted to focus on providing and creating generational wealth for my family, and I knew that I couldn't do that as a renter. So my home ownership journey actually began in 2016 when I bought my first property, and it was about it took me about two years to really take action. And I think that's the key part of any of this journey is taking action. Even then, I was still a little bit hesitant, but I was surrounded by individuals who knew real estate and was able to give me the, that education that I needed to feel comfortable making that move. And even then, uh, my hesitation kicked in. So I wanted to start with short-term renting. Luckily, during that time, Airbnb had grown a immensely popular. So I was able to start with short-term renting. 
six months in, I realized that I could have a larger cash flow if I went to long term renting, but I still needed to create some um, funds available to be able to take that next step. So I actually sacrificed. I sacrificed, moved back in with my family, and that sacrifice actually allowed me to get a property manager who helped me find my find a long-term renter. And then eventually I was able to acquire two additional property. So take action and sacrifice were two big key things that were part of my journey. Can you share with us um, some numbers here? I mean, because I work with first time home buyers and a lot of them have champagne taste, but you know, a beer budget, you know, reality. <laughs> so uh, tell us about your first purchase. How much was it? Did you put a lot of money down, no money down, did you use down payment assistance? How did you get in? And this would be a good time too, to give a shout out to the agent, right? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So as I mentioned previously, I was surrounded by real estate experts that I trusted and that that was Frazier Group Realty. Friends, I now consider them family, but I trusted them and they had years of proven success in this industry. So for my first home, I actually uh, bought it for 147,000 and I put down just around 16,000 and I was actually able to to do a conventional loan, which prior I thought I would only qualify for an FHA, but I was able to do a conventional loan for that first property. So Denise, uh, I love the fact that you talk about sacrifice. You bought a property for $147,000. And was this a condominium or a single family home? Because that price range is really low. Yes, it in fact was a condo. So it was a condo. So you yes. kind of got in where you fit in, right? And, uh, correct, correct. So you, you lived in that property. For how long did you live in before you moved out and made it into a rental? Just about two years. Okay, two years. So two years into the game, you moved out and you moved in with your parents. Now, some young folks might have seen that as a big you know, setback, but you didn't. Tell us more about that. That's correct. That's when I learned the importance of sacrificing and taking action. I was not able to do that with paying the mortgage myself. And I knew that I needed to create more income. And I'm sure we'll talk about this during the workshop, but the importance of debt to income ratio. And the only way I could do that was cutting that mortgage into half. That was done by moving in, still paying my parents rent because I need to be a part of the household, but then it right. freed up to where I can now qualify for an additional property. Wow. So you were able to rent out your property. How much was your mortgage then and how much you were able to get in rent because you were creating cash flow at this point, right? That actually helped you with paying mom and dad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely correct. So the mortgage on that property was a little over 1100. However, the rental market rate for that area for a two bedroom, two bath was 16 to 1700. So I was able to lock in a monthly rate of 1674, pay my mortgage the 11, a little over 1100. And then I was able to create cash flow. Wow. Now you held on for about two years in the property. Did you refinance before you moved out and pull out some cash? Or what did you do to, to kind of right size the mortgage? Yeah, so I did it. I, it's really about timing, but I did it right before I moved out of that property. And then I held on to the cash just for a little bit, little bit because the stock market was actually doing it crashed during that time. So I was able to benefit off of that as well. And then talk about timing and God just placing opportunities in your life at the right time. I would say probably about seven to eight months after turning that first home into a rental, an opportunity came up where I was able to buy a second rental in Los Angeles. Wow. So tell us about that rental property. So that rental um, opportunity, 
was probably not um, ideal because I did lose a family member that had turned that property into a reverse mortgage. And Eric, I'm sure you warn your viewers <laughs> regarding a reverse mortgage, but being in the position that I was in, I was able to buy the property out of a reverse mortgage, get another conventional mortgage at a low rate because rates were pretty low during that time. They were historically low actually, and then turn that into a rental as well. And with property in LA, you can actually do an ABU as well. They really loosened up some of the um, guidelines and restrictions. And I was able to turn that into two rental properties. Now, is this a single family home that you bought in LA or was this a multifamily property? Single family home with the ADU. Okay. All right. So what was the purchase price of that property? And what are your, you know, when you look at holding on to real estate, you know, that's where the wealth really comes into play, right? I mean, not buying and flipping, although you can do that, yes. but holding on as well is a long-term strategy that will pay big dividends. So you bought this property in LA and how long is this now? How long have you owned this property in LA? I've had this one since about 2019. I've had the okay. second property. Okay, so let's paint a picture here. The first property you bought for 147,000, right? Yes. How much is that property worth today? That one is actually um, estimated to be 350 to 400,000. <laughs> that is fantastic. And then the one in LA, how much did you pay for that in 2019? And what is it worth today? No, absolutely. Let's talk about that. So that property, I actually bought that one for 334000 And then as of today, it is estimated anywhere between six hundred and fifty to 700000 It's right in the heart of South Central LA, approximately about 10 miles from the new SoFi Stadium. Oh my goodness, Denise, look at you. So what are your plans here? You got two down. How many doors or houses do you plan to buy? What's your strategy moving forward? And I know you're going to be talking about this also, folks. You can hear more about these details in our seminars. Denise is an open book, willing to share and to help. So what are your goals in terms of real estate? And then I want to switch to, to investments in the market. Yeah, so... After that, that single family residence, I decided to go into multifamily because my ultimate goal is to have 10 doors. This is all part of my retirement plan. So it falls right along a line into the long term strategy. That is, in fact, my strategy. So I did end up getting a multifamily that was an additional two doors. And then my plan is to keep getting multifamilies until I can get to 10. And then of course, you never know what opportunities and blessings come after that, but that's the path that I'm on at the moment. Okay, so it uh, looks like I missed a property. So we have a third property here and this property is a two unit, three unit. How many units is that? Property? This one is a two unit. Two unit property. And so when did you purchase that property? I actually purchased that property the beginning of this year in February, exactly. Okay, and then was it an REO? Was it a, I mean, what was there a special deal or how did you structure it? What did you pay? What were the rents on it? Because you're not living in that property, right? This is purely an investment. Yes, exactly. So as I mentioned, the first two properties were conventional. So I do have two conventional loans. So this third property, I was actually able to do an FHA loan. So this property was $449,000 and my down payment with closing costs totaled maybe just a little over $25,000. Really, really low entry price to get into multifamily. I was able to rent out the back unit for $1,300, and I was able to rent out the, fir the front unit for $2,100. Wow. So um, are you cash flow positive here? 
This one, I'm just about break even, but I'm comfortable with that because going back to the long-term strategy as it does get equity, um, I will have that. And then I did buy in a higher interest rate market. So should markets go down, I'll have the opportunity to refi and then start producing cash flow. Wow, you have thought it through and you are making progress in getting to your goal of 10 doors. So let me count it up, right? Looks like we're four down and six more to go. That's so, exactly right. So talk about your investment experience, because again, this is part of walking in prosperity, right? You want people to be in real estate, but you also want them to be financially literate about investing in the market. So where did you get your knowledge and uh, what is your market, uh, your, your, your equity strategy for investing in equities? Yeah, so University of Redlands, I did do my master's there, my MBA with the specialization in finance. That actually piqued my interest. That was about 2012, 2013. I wasn't where I wanted to be financially to enter the market, but I knew if the market was to ever go down, I would take my opportunity and jump into the stock market. You know, we all know what happened, the pandemic happened, but the pandemic did cause the stock market to come down. And that was a comfortable entry level for me. And that's when I actually took that leap of faith and jumped into the stock market. My strategy for that is very similar to my real estate strategy. It is to buy and hold. So I only buy stocks, one that I understand, and two that I can hold on to for 10 years or more. So what stocks are you recommending? Now, again, you're not a licensed securities agent, but what are you, what are you, and when someone asks you, you know, what are you doing? What stocks do you get excited about and you share and that you are actually investing in? Yes, I love talking about this. So thank you for asking this question. So how I look at stocks, I look at it by industries, actually two ways. So when I look at it by industries, I always look who are the top performers in that industry. And that's who I typically invest in. So when you think about technology, just computer, Microsoft comes to name. I'm familiar with them. I look at their balance sheets. I'm comfortable with how they have performed over the long term. So I, I would invest in Microsoft. Same thing with electrical vehicles, Tesla. You, you look at their performance, they have captured the pretty much the entire uh, electrical vehicle market. I'm comfortable with that. I don't do the riskier stocks because I'm not familiar with some of those companies. So I tend to only do with what I know. And that's what I would encourage new investors. Invest in a company that you are familiar with, that you trust and you know has been around for a long time, but most importantly, they're taking action with innovation, which means they're going to keep up with how technology advances over the long term. What I like the most about uh, what you're saying is that you're investing in companies uh, which you're using their product and services and you you know them and you understand and you know when you know a company and you're using their products and services when you look at their 10k and the, the you understand what you're looking at and you read everything in there you have a clear picture of where the direction the company is going their their strip their, their strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats right you do your uh, own SWOT yes. analysis or as mba students out there and uh and and get a really comfortable feeling about investing and so this is not a, these are not stocks that you get up in the morning worried about and having to check all the time, right? But in fact, how often do you even check their performance? <laughs> it's so funny you ask that. I think as a new investor, you probably do check more frequently because you're new, so you want to keep an eye on it. But once your comfortability level increases, which can only increase, by the way, by actually doing it, I would say now maybe one to every two weeks are if something and let's say our economy has affected the stock market, then I might take a peek. And that's usually to see if there's something else that's now performing in the red that I could possibly buy as what I call on sale. Awesome. Well, folks, this is a great 
uh, example of what you can do. Denise, you weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth, right? I mean, you had some pretty humble beginnings, right? And you you worked your way, you worked going through school. You I don't tell us about that. How'd you get started? Yeah, you so, from? I know you're from Southern California, but give us the backstory here. So it's very special. So I grew up in Southern California. The my second property is actually the home that I grew up in. So it has a special meaning meaning to me. But I grew up in Southern California. I went did my schooling through the Los Angeles Unified School District until I came to Fontana for high school. Um, and I came from a modest family, bought their first home in 2000, early 2000, which was part of the subprime bubble, are getting ready to get there, I should say, because it didn't happen until later. Um, lost our home, had to start all over. So I've seen the cycle happen of when the community does not have the financial education and how it can take away any wealth that we're either trying to accumulate or we already have. So that was my background. And that's why I'm so passionate about this foundation is because I truly believe if my family had that financial education back then, I can't even think about where we would be now in the future. But that's okay because we're taking action now to make sure that we do have that gener generational wealth moving forward. Denise, thank you so much for sharing your story, your life, your investments, your strategy, for forming this organization, Walking in Prosperity. And I love that it's based on Ecclesiastes chapter, what, two, verse 15, or is it 19? What is that? Five, what is it? Yeah, five, verse 19. And if you have a moment, Eric, I would love to share that actual scripture yes. with your listener yes. and viewers. Ecclesiastes but it's verse 19 go ahead yes sure. yes and it says and it's a good thing for us to accept our wealth and our lot in life to enjoy our work and accept what is meant for us this is indeed a gift for, from god and that's what the word says and um we're going to walk into that right we're going to walk into that by faith believing and getting the support uh that we need and uh, he provides the support, you know? You are yes. his hands and eyes and his ears and his feet to reach out to help others. And that's what you're doing with this organization. Now, if anyone's interested in partnering with you and putting on these webinars and seminars, how can they reach you? Yeah, so we're just like everyone else, we're available on Facebook and Instagram, Walking in Prosperity. And then we also have an email address, Walking in Prosperity Ministry at gmail.com. And please feel free to visit our website, www.wipmministry.org. We are having an event, folks. November, what is the date, Denise? Saturday, November 4th at noon. Saturday, November 4th, 4th at noon. So everyone has to have lunch. So have lunch with us virtually online and learn about investing in real estate as a first-time home buyer. We're going to talk about FHA, VA, USDA. We're going to talk about how to buy an investment property as a first-time home buyer, whether you live in it or you don't live in it. Uh, because real estate is truly a game changer. And uh, to have examples like you, Denise, I mean, you're, 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 you're the real deal. You're the real deal. And you are making yourself accessible and available to anyone who wants help. And um, that's to be admired. And uh, uh, your stock is through the roof with me. And um, the Powers Now Media is here to support you 100%. Uh, from the beginning to the end, uh, to uh, making this uh, mission and, and, and the, the vision of walking in prosperity come to fruition. So thank you uh, for what you're doing. I want to give you the final word on this uh, interview today. And I certainly hope that those who are watching or listening will go to your website, to your social media platforms, connect with you, and also more importantly, click on the link below in the description and join the webinar for November. What's the date again? Saturday, November 4th. 
Saturday, November 4th at 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Now we're here in California, but if those of you out of state want to join us, please do. You know, this information has no uh, geographical boundaries. So Denise, your final word. I just want to first thank you, Eric, for opening your platform up to Walking in Prosperity. We are extremely grateful and appreciative of your support. And then for the audience, I just want to encourage you to identify your passion and your purpose in life and then take action. And lastly, invest in yourself. That starts with financial education, and that's what Walking in Prosperity, we are here to provide that to you. Denise, thank you so much for joining me today. For those of you who are watching or listening, I want to encourage you to follow Denise Hunt. Go to her website, go to her Facebook, go to her social media platforms. Everything is in development. This is a brand new organization with a serious goal of really helping people, especially young people like Denise, get into the game of real estate. I'm so proud of her. I've known her forever, it seems like, and I'm just uh, excited about the future of the number of people that are gonna be impacted by her story and by her help. She's been willing to share her story. You know all of her business, folks. She's an open book, and, and she's proud of what she's accomplished and I can't wait to have her back when she hits her 10 doors. And then I already know that she's going to then probably double up and shoot for 20 because she's got a whole lot of living to do. Again, I want to thank Denise for her time with us today. And I want to thank you, our audience, for listening uh, to The Powers Now on the podcast platform, watching us on all the streaming platforms and on social media. Thank you so much for uh, being listeners and followers. Uh, please check out our magazines that are just chock full of great information, the Powers Now magazine. Make sure you download our TV app. Uh, in fact, on our TV app, you'll be able to watch this show. Uh, if you're not watching it already, our TV app, if you're watching it on YouTube or our website, you can find it on our TV app. Just go to your Android or iPhone and type in Power Is Now and download the app and uh, catch all the great programming in, in addition to additional shows under the Powers Now Community TV. Well, that's a wrap. Remember, we are at our best and we maximize our success when we act now. The Power is Now. Thank you for watching. The Power is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, Real Estate, Programming Guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate news and information from industry experts. Subscription is free. Sign up today. Thepowersnow.com. Thepowersnow.com.